Hey, what's up, guys? This is Nick White. Uh, I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube, and you can check the description for literally everything that you need. Um, this is Java. We're doing all the Java problems here, so you can just check them out. There's like a problem sequence on HackerRank called Java where you just learn Java. Uh, we use integers A, B, and N to create the following series. So I wouldn't even pay attention to this. You can look into it if you want to, but it explains it down below. You're given Q, Q queries in the form of A, B, and N. For each query, print the series corresponding to the given A, B, and N values. So we're given a loop where we get different A, B, and N values, and we have to generate the sequence based on those values. So the first line contains an integer Q, denoting the number of queries. Each line I of the Q subsequent lines contains three space-separated integers describing their respective A of I, B of I, N of I for the, the query. So we're going to, in this example, we get two, is and um, that's the amount of queries that we're going to get, and then we're going to get 0, 2, and 10. So 10 is the amount of uh, values we want to return in our sequence, and uh, we're going to print those all in a space separated we're going to space separate all of those values on a single line so this is the first value in the sequence second value in the sequence all the way up until 10 this is the first value second value all the way up until five of this sequence so these are sequences values uh a b n a b n and uh, we kind of just plug them into this. Now, if you look down here, this is an example. This explains it much clearer than it does up here. So I would look at this. So we get A is 0, B is 2, N is 10. So you can see how it looks. This is how it works right here. This is actually a better example where A is 5, B is 3, and N is 5. So what do you do is A is always going to be the first element. And what you're adding is B times whatever value you're at in the sequence. So for the first um, iteration through our loop, we're obviously going to loop up to n. So first of all, let's write our loop. So this is a loop where we get our se sequence values, and then we're going to have another inner loop up to n, right? So uh, we already used i up here, so we're going to have to use j, j is 0, j is less than n, um, j++, plus plus, right? And what we're going to do is we have a is always going to be here, which is going to add the um, you're gonna have b times whatever value you're at in the sequence so we can imagine this is the first sequence value second third fourth fifth um, so we're gonna be multiplying the sequence value times b each time and adding that on to uh, we're gonna return a sum each time so the way that you do this is actually really interesting and I didn't even um, really know how it worked until I kind of looked at the solution here I like I did a I did it my way first but this way is actually better um, so what you could do is, what you need to understand is that you're taking the, you're taking the previous value, the previous sum value, and you're going to be adding on, you know, B times the next sequence value. So how do we store the previous sum value efficiently? Well, I did like an array at first, but that's actually not as smart as the best solution you can do here, right? You can actually just, because A is useless. A is just getting added on to this thing every time, this uh, sequence every single time. So what we do is we can just use A as the current sum, right? So we can do A plus equals B, right? So on the first loop of this, right, A plus equals B. B is 3, right? Because it's going to be 1 times 3. Now, um, first of all, we're going to do if J is greater than 0, we're going to print system.out.print uh, space. Otherwise, we're not going to print a space because um, if J is 0, then we want to have the you know first values be printed. You don't need a space there, right? I mean, hopefully that makes sense. You just don't need a space when you're printing the first value. Um, and then this one, you can actually print the, the next value, and this is going to print A, right? Because A is going to be handling our sum for the given iteration of the, our loop. And now here's the only part that we have to remember is B equals B times 2. Um, B equals B times 2 because let's look here. So let's say we have A is 5, B is 3. So first, first iteration of this loop, A plus equals B. So A is 5, A plus equals 3, that's 8. So we're going to print 8, right? We print A, 8. Now B was 3, but B now becomes 6, right? And multiplying B times 2 is exactly what we're doing in this sequence every single time, and we're just adding it on to A. Um, you can look into it a little more, but basically A is our pointer to the last value, and that's why it's so great. I didn't think of that at first, but um, it's almost kind of like an actual trick algorithm right there. Uh, I was just using an array to store the previous sum value, but actually what you can do is just use this a value because it's actually useless in these sequence. Um, so we can try running this. I think it might work, but I think we might have to add a space at the end here. 
yeah, we uh, we have to print. We have to do a final print right here. Um, what do we print? I think it might be a space. No, it's a new line, right? Why wouldn't it be a new line, right? There we go, yeah. So, yeah, well, I don't know why I thought it was a space for a second there, but yeah, obviously, because there's multiple sequences, this is this outer loop is grabbing our different values, A, B, and N, for the sequences, and then this inner loop, you know, calculates all the sequence values and prints them out. Then you have to print, obviously, you could just print this uh, as well, so print new line. Uh, just empty string. Oh, that's what I was thinking of because that's how I just implemented it a second ago. So you could print the empty string using the new line or you could just print and then backslash n is a new line character. So that's going to print the next sequence on a new line. For example, we would have printed this and then we want to print that as well. So um, there's our output and hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Just multiply b by 2, store the previous sum in a. Each iteration we're just printing so we don't actually need reference to any of the sums after we do our print statements. That's why it works so well. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out the future ones. Um, I'm doing all the problems, so just check those out. All right, thanks. See ya.